In a world governed by fast-paced innovation and fragile financial infrastructure, a silent revolution has been unfolding behind the closed doors of the most powerful institutions on Earth. The swift messaging network, long hailed as the backbone of global finance, is facing a historic transformation. And at the center of this seismic shift lies the XRP ledger. Recent reports and insider leaks suggest that a joint task force involving the United States Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank has finalized plans to decommission the legacy SWIFT network and launch a full-scale migration to what insiders are calling SWIFT Nexus, a blockchain-based system running entirely on the XRP ledger. What's more shocking than the scope of this overhaul is the mandate that comes with it. All member banks are required to migrate by the end of 2026. Failure to comply means being cut off from the global financial communication grid. Let's explore this astonishing development in detail. First, we must understand what SWIFT is. The Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication has been the dominant messaging protocol for cross-border payments since 1973. Today, over 11,000 institutions in more than 200 countries rely on it. But despite its reach, SWIFT is not without problems, chief among them being speed, cost and security. Transactions can take days to settle, fees are unpredictable, and the legacy systems underpinning SWIFT are increasingly vulnerable to cyber threats. The appetite for a modern, decentralized solution has been building for over a decade. Enter Ripple and its decentralized XRP ledger. Unlike Bitcoin or Ethereum, the XRP ledger is built for high-speed financial settlements, processing thousands of transactions per second at fractions of a penny. It doesn't just hold promise, it already delivers. RippleNet, Ripple's enterprise solution, has been adopted by banks and financial institutions in over 55 countries, facilitating real-time cross-border transactions. But what the public hasn't been told at least not in plain language, is the scope of Ripple's collaboration with central banks. In early 2025, a series of test pilots conducted by the European Central Bank included the use of the XRP ledger for settling tokenized securities. Internal documents reviewed by select insiders revealed that the technology not only passed the tests, but exceeded expectations in terms of speed, transparency and auditability. Simultaneously, the Federal Reserve's Project Cedar and various FedNow trials began incorporating blockchain elements to explore instant cross-border payments. While these programs initially appeared separate, investigative journalists and blockchain analysts have discovered that both initiatives share a common technical framework, one that mirrors the design of the XRP ledger. The leaked document marked Confidential Joint Fed ECBB Task Force outlines a three-phase migration strategy under the project codenamed SWIFT Nexus. Phase one began quietly in the second quarter of 2025 with sandbox integrations for high volume corridors between the US and EU central banks. Phase two, which is scheduled for the first quarter of 2026, will onboard commercial banks in a staggered rollout. And phase three will finalize the migration by the fourth quarter of 2026. The old SWIFT protocol is slated for decommissioning by December 31st, 2026. This isn't a case of optional innovation, it's mandatory. According to the document, all financial institutions engaging in cross-border activity within Federal Reserve or ECB jurisdictions must complete integration with Nexus infrastructure by the mandated deadline. Non-compliance will result in exclusion from central bank clearing services let that sink in for a moment. This isn't a future possibility, it's a forced evolution. Banks don't have a choice here. The volume is guaranteed not by market demand, but by central bank decree. Now let's examine why XRP and the XRP ledger are the chosen infrastructure. First, the XRPL is open source, but can be deployed in private, permissioned versions, making it perfect for regulatory environments. It supports smart contracts, tokenized asset issuance, and most crucially, atomic settlement, which allows transactions to settle instantly and without counterparty risk. These are not just useful features. In the context of a global network handling trillions in daily volume, they are necessities. 
And here lies the real catalyst. The daily value transacted via SWIFT is estimated to exceed $5 trillion. If even a fraction of this volume migrates to the XRP ledger, the impact on XRP's market capitalization could be massive. Analysts speculate that if the XRP ledger processes even 10% of that volume, the token price could range between $500 and $1,000, assuming adequate liquidity and supply lockups from institutional actors. If XRP becomes the default settlement asset for cross-border transactions, whether directly or through tokenized fiat, the ceiling might not exist. Let's also talk about the strategic implications. Central banks moving to blockchain is no longer theory, it's policy. The Bank for International Settlements, or BIS, has formally included Ripple on its cross-border payments task force alongside SWIFT. This is not a coincidence, it's a convergence. Ripple and SWIFT were competitors. Now, under pressure to modernize and scale, the gatekeepers of legacy finance appear to have chosen to integrate the best of both worlds, legacy connectivity with decentralized settlement. The push for CBDCs, or central bank digital currencies, adds another layer. Many CBDC prototypes currently being tested across Europe, Asia and the Americas are being designed with XRP Ledger interoperability. In this new financial architecture, the XRP Ledger is not just a transactional highway, it is the digital plumbing connecting sovereign currencies in real time. But the migration also raises critical questions. What happens to banks that resist? How will regulators handle transparency in a decentralized environment? Will there be sanctions against institutions that delay integration? These are not hypothetical issues. According to the leak, the Fed and ECB are drafting policy frameworks that penalize non-participation, including the restriction of cross-border activity licenses and access to central clearing. As these policies roll out, Ripple is strategically positioning itself as the core technology provider. More importantly, it's not just Ripple Labs driving this. Dozens of other developers, validators and institutional stakeholders are now actively contributing to the XRPL ecosystem. This decentralization, paradoxically, is what makes the system scalable and secure. The network doesn't rely on any single point of failure. Let's not forget, this didn't come out of nowhere. For years, Ripple executives have signaled this shift. Brad Garlinghouse once said, in the next decade, we won't just power payments, we'll be part of the fabric of money itself. At the time, it sounded ambitious. Today, it sounds inevitable. The regulatory tide has also turned. The SEC's case against Ripple is winding down with less clarity but more acceptance. While XRP isn't universally declared a non-security, its use in institutional payments is no longer under serious threat. So where does this leave us? Well, if this leak is accurate, then by the year 2026, the old SWIFT system will be, uh, you know, history. In its place, we'll see SWIFT Nexus, powered by the XRP ledger, with full institutional backing from the world's most influential central banks. Banks will not just be encouraged, they will be required to integrate, and XRP will be at the center of it all. This isn't a moonshot, it's a migration. For investors, the implications are honestly pretty profound. The opportunity here is not just speculative, it is systemic. As banks scramble to integrate and regulatory clarity gets stronger, XRP's price will no longer just reflect retail hype. It'll reflect utility, necessity and, well, enforced volume. If trillions are moving through a pipe, and XRP is that pipe, then value will flow not only through it, but actually into it. In closing, the financial world we know is, without a doubt, undergoing irreversible change. Legacy systems are being retired. Centralized monopolies are giving way to decentralized infrastructure. And right at the center of this evolution is a digital asset that was designed from day one to do exactly this. Whether you believe the leak or not, the writing is on the blockchain. The future of finance is faster, cheaper, and a whole lot more transparent, and it's built on the XRP ledger. So the question is no longer if, but when, and from what we're seeing right now, that when is 2026? 
Thanks for watching this in-depth expose on the future of finance and the XRP-powered SWIFT 2.0 transition. If you found this video informative, just hit the like button, subscribe for more crypto deep dives, and share this video to help spread awareness. Let us know in the comments, do you think the XRP ledger will power the next financial revolution? Until next time, stay curious and stay ahead. Disclaimer, please remember I'm not a licensed financial advisor. The content presented in these videos is purely for entertainment purposes. I always encourage viewers to conduct their own research and consult with professionals before making any financial decisions. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure you turn on the notifications to be the first to know when I release new content. I'm excited to catch up with you in the upcoming video. Take care.